Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray. On today's show, I meet a musician from a band out in New York. The band is called Safety Meeting, and they are a garage indie punk, art punk band. We actually kind of talk about how they would describe their music. And I met them through, or I heard about them through the website Gemendo, which is how I've found out about a lot of the artists that I've been talking to. But uh, much like a previous musician that I talked to, they put it out there just because they found the site and saw that it was another place to promote music. And they knew that it said this music could be shared or downloaded. And they were like, they were cool with that, but didn't necessarily know what a Creative Commons site was or Creative Commons music was itself. They were just cool with the concept, which seems to be a growing theme here. But that's okay. Us as Creative Commons musicians, we're okay that other people out there are also just making music to share with people, regardless of the cause or the license. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this band who started out just recording in a garage. Then they bought a house and <laughs> created a studio in their garage, sticking with the garage theme. But it's a, uh, it's a fun interview. And I'm glad I got to meet the person. So here it is, starting right now. I'm Keith. I'm from the upstate New York band Safety Meeting. I play guitar and sing and write some songs. And, okay, so I'm going to ask the obvious question, of course, first of all, is, so the name, where did you come up with the name? Uh, you know the term, you know what low- it means? <laughs> Well, I kind of know safety meeting. I mean, I, yeah. I, I I could gather, or is there something I'm missing? Is there something I'm missing out on here? No, it's like kind of like a term just to smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. No. I assumed it was a play on just like you know boring meetings that they make, like you know when you have to go work at a job, and they're like, we're having a safety meeting, so yeah. all hands on deck sort of thing. But you're saying. It's, the, it it's the blue play. collar version of that. <laughs> okay. All right. Like if you've ever worked at like a restaurant or something. Yeah. If you want to like sneak in the back and go smoke weed, you go like, do you want to have a safety meeting? <laughs> so then none of the, like, the, the boss or manager doesn't know. And then you go back there and. Okay. No, we just yeah. would say, do you want to go smoke weed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually I, I didn't work at places that had a lot of employees and sometimes it was instigated by the owner. So it, I guess we didn't, oh, yeah. we didn't need code, but <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We always know the people that like know it, the term were like, Oh, you've worked in a restaurant or something. Right. Yeah. I haven't worked in one in quite some time. So yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> I did retail. Does that count? I don't know if they do it just in regular retail. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't worked retail. No, either. Okay. All right. Well, we could talk about work structures all day, but then how long <laughs> have you guys been together? When did you guys start out? Uh, I think 2018. So okay, it's been a minute. All right. Yeah. And you have, is that when you guys released, I think you just released one song, which was, and I'm going to mispronounce this every time. Yeah. Just, let me give you a little pre- preface here where I am. I'm in Wisconsin. Uh-huh. There is actually a urban legend. Like we have our own sort of, you know, Loch Ness monster legend here and it's called the Hodag. So oh, really? I'm going to accidentally say Hodag whenever I talk about your song, Hodad, just just bear with me when I say that I'm saying it wrong just from habit. But, uh, so you guys released Hodad, right? Uh, was that your first release? Yeah. Yeah. That was our first one. Okay. So I guess, how did this all come together? What, what, how did the band start? Let's, let's do the big question. How did this start? How did you end up writing your first song? I was, uh, I was friends, our original drummer, he was like my neighbor in like the first apartment that I got. Yeah. He played drums. I played guitar. We were like, let's fucking, let's make a band. We wanted free drinks, really. Okay. That was like the main thing was we realized that people will give you free drinks if you play at their places. <laughs> so we just, we just wanted true. free drinks. And uh, then we met our, my, the current bass player right now. I worked with him at a pizza place and uh, yeah, it just went from there. Okay. Had any of you, like, did you have any musical background whatsoever? I was in bands in high school, and so was the drummer. Yeah, he was in a lot of bands in high school. 
Okay. All right. But so this wasn't like, like your first foray, foray into music. It was like our first like real attempt at it. Mm -hmm. Like I think in high school, like my band played like two birthday parties and a school dance, you know, <laughs> okay. like very like low key stuff. But yeah, then once we realized like, I don't know, I think when you're like younger, you don't even realize that like how many opportunities there are to like play out. Yeah. So I didn't even know that you could do that. Okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> We did open mics. We were like, these suck. And then we were like, oh, people will let you play in their basement and breweries and shit like that. Right. What was the, I mean, okay. So I get the doing it for free beer. That's, you know, a yeah. given. were you guys just doing covers? Like when did you start writing originals? Yeah, we, we were doing originals like pretty early on, but, yeah. uh, it was a, it was a mixture. Cause I think a lot of the early gigs are like, you know, they want you to play three hours for like, people in the brewery so it, it, it was like a mixture and obviously like the originals go over poorly they just want to hear you do like down by the river <laughs> so we quickly were like all right let's like start actually writing shit and like finding our own sound and all that uh -huh. good stuff okay and now when you guys uh decided to release an album first of all how did you record it the first release that you did our first EP, it was in like my basement. <laughs> okay. It was a very lo fi. That's the, like, everything we've ever done is just like super DIY. Yeah. So, like, not only were we like learning how to write songs, we were learning how to record and all of it at the same time. What were you recording on? Uh, it's always been Logic. Oh, okay. Usually yeah. everybody I talk to uses uh, FL Studio. But oh wait, no, that's not true. I guess someone else used Reaper. Never mind. I'm just assuming everybody did. But you were using Logic. I want to say you're the first person I talked to that used Logic. Good. I, I love Logic. I, I represent Logic. Okay. <laughs> that's like that's my a... program. All right. Now, did you, I guess, did you write the songs as you were recording them? Did you already have them? I guess, what, what was the process as far as like, let's do this album, what should be on it? I mean, I'm assuming since you played out live, you had a bunch of songs, right? But you said you released it as an EP. Yeah, well, we had a, originally we had a, another guy in the band who was like guitarist and he was going to be like the singer songwriter. Hmm. But I don't know. Then like the more I was playing, like I started to be like, I think I could write some songs and it just started to be like we were both writing songs and then uh, eventually we had a fallout with him. So then I just became the only one writing songs and the band's taken a couple forms since it started. <laughs> oh, it has? Has it always been a three piece or has it been more than that? Uh, originally it was a four piece and then it was a three piece. And then our drummer moved to Brooklyn to not live in upstate New York anymore. And then we got a new drummer. So I think the current formation of safety meeting is probably only three years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then how did you meet the guys that you're working with now? So the bass player, he's Sam. He's been around the whole time. Okay. And then the, uh, our drummer, Dan, he was in another band that we used to play with like all the time. They were called the ugly Muppets uh -huh. and he was their drummer. And then we still had our drummer and we were looking to get a new guitarist and he was going to be the guitarist. And then when our drummer left, we were like, all right, you're, you're on the drums now. <laughs> okay. So that's how that worked out. <laughs> no huge <laughs> vetting process. Like you see in all the video doc or in all the band documentaries. Um, where... <laughs> my, my only stipulation, cause I, I knew him, but you know, you know, like, you know, like people in bands, but you're not, you don't know them a ton. Right. I, so we knew him a little bit. And then my only rule was, I was like, if you're going to be in the band, we have to be like friends. Like I can't be in a band with someone and it's just like practice and that's it. Okay. So we became friends very fast. Like he's one of my best friends now. So that's good. Yeah. yeah it's always it's awesome. good to be able to hang out with people. And the, uh, so now getting back to the song, Ho Dad, the, uh, I wanted to say Ho Dag. Uh, I found the song on Jumendo or maybe free music archive. So here's the interesting okay. thing. So I'm, my band is a creative commons band. So we release our music under creative commons license. Now I found your stuff on there, but I see like on Bandcamp, you don't necessarily release under creative commons. So what was the process of putting the stuff on a creative commons website? Or do you even know that you did? No, <laughs> Sometimes is that what, people don't. Is that what Tremendo is? <laughs> yeah. 
it's so people can download it and use it for like background music and videos and it, depending on what license you use that's that's what it's for yeah i think like when i signed up it told me shit like that but i was just like i'm, I'm just trying to get it out there <laughs> <laughs> all right well then follow-up question since you didn't know that that's what it was how do you feel about that type of process about people you just uh I mean, they, they license, if they're going to use it commercially, they have to ask your permission and actually go through you to do it. But as far as under creative commons license, uh, depending on the license you choose, you're saying you can do this with it. And one of them being like, you can download this and have it like in the background of your, you know, vlog or your, or your, uh, uh Twitch stream or something like that. And you're not going to get in trouble for it. What, what do you think of that possibility of being able to use it that way? that's awesome yeah i'm i'm like use it i don't give a shit <laughs> okay the, the more people who know about us the better like like i said we i making money doing this i like expect to that to never happen so right i i don't care <laughs> <laughs> all right and that's that's not uncommon and that's i've talked to many people who have put their music out on free music archive or Jamendo, which by the way, if you haven't done free music archive, do that one next. If you're just putting your music out there, free music archive is very much the same. Only it's based here in uh, the U S it used to be owned by WFMU, but okay. they, they dropped it a few years ago and someone else bought it out, but it was when they owned it, it was, it was pretty sweet um, what they had there, but uh, it's still good. And I mean, if, if I heard my song in like a commercial for anything, I'd be like, Fuck yeah, this rules. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm with you on that one. I would, I'd pretty, I would even, even like a Ford truck commercial, I'd be like, what, was was Bruce Springsteen busy that day? <laughs> Who's, I think it's the, the Black Keys now. They're the Ford truck guys, right? That's true. That's true, they are. Or or Bon Jovi. Oh my God, I keep making references to where around where you're living. You're over on the East Coast. And so far I've yeah. made WFMU, Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen. Look at me being topical. Oh yeah. Um, Anyway, sorry. So, so how would you explain your music to people when they go, what's your band like? So hard. I, I think we're like pretty unique, which I, Wait, I like. Was that the explanation or are you just it's, saying yeah, the just question so is so hard? Okay. We're like, yeah, we're like, it's like garage rock slash, it's like not punk enough to be punk, but it's not rock enough to be rock. We're like in that sweet spot in the middle. Okay. And you don't have a specific like genre tag that you would attach to it. Whenever I hear a band that like you know Parquet Courts, that band, yeah, I, they're like a influence of mine. They call themselves art rock, so then or art punk. So then I'll just be like, we're art punk, I guess. <laughs> like, okay. I could see art punk, yeah, yeah. I feel like when I think of punk, I think of like Dead Kennedys, and we're so not that, but. I've think that too yeah it's it's evolved since then it's just like with alternative alternative now can actually mean like jangly acoustic you know yeah <laughs> and then everyone originally everyone was like oh you guys are indie rock but isn't that doesn't that just mean you're like signed to an independent label thank you i've yeah, been making so, this point forever yeah it <laughs> it's not a genre it's a concept yeah i'm like we're lower than indie rock we're diy rock like we don't <laughs> right which also is just do it yourself that's like grassroots yeah yeah I mean, I think maybe indie is taken that way just because of like what Ian, uh, now I'm going to say his name wrong because I want to say Ian McKellen, uh, dude from Minor Threat starting SST Records and all that, like that was, or Discord, whenever yeah. he started, that was, that was like DIY because he started his own label and was like promoting other bands and stuff. Like that's yeah. what I see is, but it gets associated with punk because that's the dude that did it. And that's the, the music that he was doing to it. Yeah, I so, think people now too, it's like Mac DeMarco is like indie, he's like the god of indie rock. So mm -hmm. people think of it in like that sort of sound is indie rock. Right. But indie rock's like a huge umbrella in my opinion, I guess. I agree. It, yeah. And it, it, I do, I'm just glad somebody finally was like, yes, it's a, it, it's based on a thing, not a sound. Yeah, so, yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> so on top of that, so you would, you would explain your music that way, but, um, as far as songwriting, like what's your process when writing a song? Like, so that first EP, we, we wanted to have like a vibe, kind of like a chill, you know, relaxed vibe. Yeah. And that was when we started like getting really into playing shows and we realized 
that they were low key songs, very mellow. And then we'd play with other bands that were more upbeat, and it was like, shit, that's the reaction I want from the crowd. I want people like moshing and jumping around and stuff. So oh, yeah. that's like kind of what I've been on since is like, I almost write songs in my mind thinking like, will people move to this? That, that didn't occur to me. Yeah, you're right. Your earlier stuff was a lot more mellow. Yeah. I didn't like even know. Yeah. No, Hodag actually is more of a strummy song, isn't it? Or Hodad. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I did it again. <laughs> uh, the Yeah, it's more of a strummy song, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. I don't know why I didn't get to that. Yeah, because... <laughs> well, that's so, good, because I, I always listen to it, and I'm like, fuck, this doesn't even sound like us anymore. Yeah. Really? No, I got... I still get it. It's... It, I, I see the progression. I think a lot of it has to do... So lyrically, and I guess I would ask you about this, too. I mean your lyrics are definitely in the vein of what you said as what you want the reaction of the crowd to be. I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, I wouldn't say that you're going for depth, you know, inner introspective <laughs> ballads or anything like the complete that. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think it's the lyrics and, and just the concept of the lyrics that is the reason why I didn't notice it because I would say the message is the same. Yeah. Yeah, I think like probably the only like that first EP has a song uh, called My Boof, which is about like my girlfriend. And uh, then Man's Man was kind of about being like wanting stuff that you can't have. But then mm -hmm. I just was like, what am I doing? Like my personality, I'm like sarcastic and kind of just don't really give a shit. So then yeah. I started being like, I got to write more in my own voice. That's Okay. I'm about having a good time, so I want my music to be about having a good time. Which I would definitely say that's that's what that's the vein that I get from it. And nice. also, before I move on from this, what is a hodad? I guess I don't know what the hell that is. I got a Dane Electro hodad. It's a guitar. Ah, that, okay. that whole song's about a guitar. All right. See now, the hodag thing that I told you about earlier it kept messing me up because I'm like, it's got to be slang for something, but no, it's yeah. specifically an actual thing. Yeah. All right. Deep story behind that. All right, good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so now moving on to the latest album, the, um, I'm blanking on the name now, the Sal, no, let it, what's Devil's the new Lettuce. album? Devil's Lettuce. Devil's Lettuce, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to, I said Minor Threat before, so instantly I was like Salad Days, which was their second album. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so tell me about that. Tell me about the making of this album as compared to what you said about the first one. This one, so I just moved into a brand new studio. And really? uh yeah, I got a house and it came with a garage that was unfinished. So the okay. first thing that me and the band did was put drywall and insulation up and uh made this nice little studio. And then I don't know, I think we probably started writing those songs about a year ago. And then yeah, we just tried to bang them out as fast as possible. Okay. Now as another another band that has a spot where they basically turned we have a practice spot and we basically tricked it out and we do live streaming and we record everything there and we've got 24 channels and all this kind of stuff i want to yeah. geek out with you for a while on this new studio you're talking about so right. tell me about the making of this of this garage thing so you put up the drywall now how are you soundproofing it you clearly have neighbors i'm assuming right yeah, and I just I just pretend they don't exist. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because I was going to ask, like, how are you? Is it, are you practicing during the day at night? Like, what's what's happening there? We don't we don't go too late. Maybe ten p.m. cut off. Oh, okay, that's not but bad. They're pretty cool. They they seem like some old hippies. Ah. So I think one time. So I record other bands too in here, and I had a a much more metal band over. And uh, that was the only time they've complained so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, it was like, that's not the music we're used to hearing bother us all day. That's much worse. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Now, what's the, what's the whole setup you got going there? Now, I know you said you used Logic before, but did you trick out more of like how you're recording? Or are you still just kind of using a sound card? Like, what's your setup? I got a Focusrite 8 channel. That's, okay. that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I like... I like 57s. That's like my go-to mic. Mm -hmm. I've bought so many mics and every time I just come back to 57s. Okay. That's that's pretty much it. Honestly, we should like think about it more. We're so 
we so don't want to pay attention to like any of that. We just want to like everything we do, we do it like live, no click. Mm -hmm. We just want the raw feel of our sound. Okay. Do you, so you're saying you record everybody at once? Yeah. And through an eight channel, how are you miking the drums then? Drums, I got one on the snare, one on the bass drum, one overhead, and uh, usually I'll do a room, and that's it. Okay, but that's so. Are but are you running those all into the four channels, and then you're using the other four channels for everybody else? Yep. Yeah. So two for guitar, bass, DI, and okay. then yeah, we'll do the vocals after, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, that's not a bad setup. We we did uh, for the longest time. We did a two channel sound card. I just had like this weird little, uh, it was super old too. It was just like an alpha, a logic alpha. I don't even remember what brand it was, but it was called an alpha because it had a logo on it that said alpha. It was just a two channel. And it wasn't even a two channel. It was a one XLR and one instrument in. So we were recording oh, yeah, everything yeah. bit by bit. Like they, they called it a two channel and I'm like, that's not two channel. That's two separate types. Yeah. Anyway. A little rant there, but uh, we did that for the longest time. And then finally we got eight channels and the second we hooked that up, we're like, well, we need more than this. And now we're up to 16 and now we're up to Jesus. We're having conversations about like, let's do 32. 32 <laughs> is what we need. It's like we're yeah. a four piece band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For us, like, yeah. It's just funny how that goes. Like, I think we, the first album we did, it was like just that pre Sonos little two channel. Mm hmm. And then, yeah, right away, you're like, if I had eight channels, I would never complain. And then you get eight channels, you're like, if I had 16, I would never complain. <laughs> just keeps going. Yeah. It's just like, uh, I don't know if you've ever had to do a, uh, a either a, well, no, you might not have, a cassette four track. The big oh, yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have. Okay. I, I know a lot of people have more access to getting just a straight up DAW now these days, and you can just have as many tracks as you want, but man, the struggle is real going four track. And then you discover like, Oh, I can dump the three tracks onto one track. And then I have three more tracks and it's like, brilliant. Yeah. But yeah. There's no, you're thinking you get all in meh. Anyway, more channels it's, always. So the second album we did, I have a, uh, Porta two task and Porta two. Yeah super like i can't i got the craziest deal on it it's new in the box the japanese edition and everything yeah and my whole i like it's so hard to learn that like how to record do like like you were saying bouncing it down and shit yep so my goal was to use that and we recorded a couple songs with it and i was like why am i making this so much harder on myself like <laughs> it made no and it didn't sound as good like I, I don't know. I, I get why people love using vintage shit, but sometimes you're like just making it so much harder for yourself. They love using it in the sense that they know how to use it. If you're yeah. teaching yourself to use it, then it's like, well, you might not achieve what people who already know what it does would get out of it. You yeah. know, that's my theory. Who knows? I, I'm trying to be modern. Like if I want a tape sound, there's a thousand plugins for that nowadays. <laughs> right. But I actually have a hard time finding a good one. All the ones that I find, all they do is they just make a hissing noise. And it's right. like, that's yeah, not what yeah, I'm asking yeah. for. I get that you can make it sound like a piece of shit tape. I, yeah. I want the actual <laughs> effect that it does to processing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, my thing is like I, so many people who are musicians, they want to play for like the douche in the back of the room who's got like their arms folded. <laughs> I'd rather play for the person who's never played guitar and like, Right. I'm not trying to impress like any, you know, douchey guitar guy. <laughs> that should be your t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Although That'd I do like your t-shirt. I'm getting, oh, now it makes sense. I'm getting high safety meeting. I just yeah. now got your t-shirt. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I also want to ask you about your videos. I love your videos. And they, they're, they're ones where it's like, you have this going back to the, the vintage look, you have this lo-fi feel, but at the same time, the more you watch it, you're like, Oh no, no, this is actually very well done to make it look like a lo-fi feel. So yeah, I want to learn about this. Tell me about that. Who's making these videos. First of all, who's recording them? Just us three. <laughs> get out of here. Really? Yeah. We're, we're little maniacs. We just like <laughs> get high and fucking turn on a camera. 
All right. So who's, first of all, what kind of camera, camera are you running? Cause it's not uh, just somebody's phone, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Get the, okay. Somebody's yeah, phone. No. This is, I, we did one of them with uh, the Canon Rebel T6. Okay. It sucked. <laughs> really? Yeah. The phones nowadays are like amazing. Huh. Cause I feel like you achieved that flat look, whereas mine always look like, well, I mean, there, there, the phone is clear, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, that's, it's got a weird round. It, it doesn't look flat. It doesn't look film like, which is weird to say, because I'm saying I want a digital camera that makes it look flat like film, but it's still yeah. not film. But I feel like my phone can't do that, but you're getting kind of that look, but maybe it's because you're doing it in a video style i don't know why I think it's because we're doing everything wrong <laughs> okay all right like, so what, tell, yeah tell me about that like I, you know you're supposed to like light shit i have no idea how to light anything i have no <laughs> idea what a focal length is i don't know any of that <laughs> okay green like my thing is like we use a green screen and i try to do it the worst way possible <laughs> yeah well you at least went as far as getting the green screen where's that set up is it in your garage yeah, yeah, we'll just, we set it up, like, right over the door. Okay. <laughs> All right, I love that. Now, you're, okay, so you record these. You're even doing different angles, too. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick one in particular. Uh, the, okay. the, uh, the scooter one, the one where you're on the scooter. I forget the name of the song that is, but where you're all riding on, like, a Vespa or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Bumpfuck now, USA. Yeah, Bumpfuck USA, that's the one. Yeah. So tell me about the, the recording of that one. What was the process? So I, I'm bought this scooter it was a 1984 <laughs> honda aero okay there's about 2500 in the usa all right i got obsessed with them found a guy selling one bought it from him and then bought another one that was broken so i had a parts one and uh every time i rode this scooter mm -hmm. it broke every single time <laughs> like it was a mess. I probably just, I probably wrote it. I had it for two years. I probably wrote it 50 times and had to repair it 50 times. Okay. So when it finally really, really shit the bed, I had an idea to make that music video. And then, uh, I sold it like two days later. <laughs> <laughs> so now somebody else is fixing it. And I warned him. I was like, listen, nothing on this works. It is it starts and that's about as much as you get out of it. And he, he was more than happy to take it off my hands. A thousand dollars. I can't complain. So he must've known something you didn't cause there's it, it, to be that excited and go thousand bucks. Hell yeah. Like that even seems too much to me for a working one. If you want he my said, opinion, he said, quote, some idiot in Brooklyn will buy this. That was his exact quote. Isn't so he, he that idiot? I think he's a flipper. No, I think he was going to flip it. <laughs> okay. All right. More power to him. All yeah. right. So, so the scooter, now you guys are sitting on there. You got the wind machine blowing, I believe. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so tell me about the recording process of that. How, how long did it take you guys to record that? Cause you got different angles on there too. You've got a side and a front and all that kind of stuff. That, that was the first one we, we like ever did a music video. So we recorded it and then I went and tried to edit it all. And the first takes were awful, just awful. Mm -hmm. We we didn't know that when you're doing lyrics, you really got to like mouth the words like extremely. Mm. So we basically did it. I went back to the guys and was like, that that fucking sucks, dude. We need to redo this. And it was just this process of learning how to make it not look shitty. OK. Yeah, but, I guess I never thought about that. Yeah. Well, And it's because everybody else was singing along with it, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. We all were doing singing for it. OK. All right, so you did the second take. The, that one turned out better. Did you have? Did you at least do some spot checks? Like you record one, and then you went and looked at it, or did you just go through the whole process of recording it again? Just went, yeah. Just we just take as many takes as possible. You, we basically put the song on and we pick an angle and we'll do it like ten times and we'll just keep doing it. All right. And the drunker you get, the less weird it becomes. Because <laughs> in reality, we're just As like three everything. dudes holding on to each other on a scooter in my garage. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. It's, it's pretty awkward. Well, I mean, I'm assuming that's how you sold it. You're like, guys, let's get together, have some hug time, and shoot a video. Yeah, let's all it's wear denim and... Bonding. Like, yeah, kiss each other. That's what we did. <laughs> so the... the uh, now you also have the background. How did you end up finding the backgrounds for it that you used on the green screen? 
YouTube. <laughs> oh, okay. You just... it might be illegal. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, you probably got it from, oddly enough, uh, th the same thing that applies to what I told you about before for music. There are people who shoot background videos or just like slow motion drone things and they put it up there for Creative Commons use and then people put it in videos and put music behind it and they go, now I'm a millionaire. Yeah, so yeah. If we ever get sued, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm kind of always in the back of my mind, even though I'm sure it would be a horrible thing to experience. When I think of the concept of possibly being sued, I'm like, man, that would be great press. The exposure yeah, yeah. of it all. You know, that's my first thought. <laughs> then I don't think about the fact that it also crushes your life and, you know, your livelihood and your income. But <laughs> we'll get there when I see it. You know, and I we'll feel see like what a, happens. Maybe if you just say sorry, they'll drop it. That's, that's how delusional I am. <laughs> a little bit of this. Sorry. Like, just say it was an honest mistake. <laughs> right. I didn't know. Um, all right. So now when you were editing the video, what were, uh, now what were you using for software on the videos? FL studios. I think that's what it is. No, wait, what is it called? Oh, final cut. Final, final cut. cut. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And had you I, ever used that before? Or were you just learning as you went along? So in high school, I was a big, uh, Microsoft movie maker. Oh, okay. Yeah. You ever use that? Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, I was amazing at that. <laughs> and then uh that kind of went away but a lot of the principles kind of stayed the same so mm -hmm. so i had some experience and then it's just about you know learning the doll or whatever they call it right I, yeah what do they call i know a i don't digital know audio workstation so would it be digital no that would be like dilf um <laughs> <laughs> like it's a dilf yeah <laughs> yeah so you use the movie dilf um no the uh it's yeah, it's, it's interesting editing video. I've been doing it a lot more lately and it's, there are things you don't realize much like with the lip syncing thing, the, just little things that as you go along, it's like, God, I would just keeping so many, not doing quick cuts. Quick cuts is like a, a weird art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And every time I make a music video, I do one draft and I cut where I think I need to. And then you realize you need to make 7,000 more cuts. <laughs> yes. Like it needs to be like every second is a new frame. And uh, that's just kind of, that's kind of what you learn. Well, and I used to think that that was ridiculous, you know, because, and maybe my tastes have changed, but I mean, uh, like my wife used to run art house theaters and we'd go see movies there and it would be like, you know, seven minutes of a person standing, looking at something. And it's like, yeah, you'd be like, that's filmmaking. Then you right. go do that yourself. And it's just like, you're going to cut anytime soon. Like I'm sitting here watching you stare at something. It, it, the same concept doesn't apply when it comes to like music and stuff. And you no, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm definitely not like Kubrick. I'm, I'm doing as many <laughs> cuts as possible. <laughs> right. Exactly. And it, you, it just gets, you get bored and you don't realize that or what it, even just the slightest thing. It's so funny. But, yeah. Um, okay. So you, you put those videos in, you're using that. I'm trying to think, I want to say there was one more question I had about it. Um, uh, oh, so when you put it out, I mean, are you just, you just put it out in the world or are you promoting these? Like, how are you, how are you promoting the stuff that you're releasing? So you've got the albums, you've got the videos. What are you doing with it once it's out there? Mostly just Instagram. Okay. Yeah. We're, I'm, I'm terrible promoter. I can make music videos. I can record music. I can write songs, but promotion, it feels like the worst task to me. Okay. I, I, get, I get that. It, it really is. A, it's it's like the other 50% of being in a band. And it's great that we now have this capability to take charge of our own voice and what we want to do online. But at the same time, it's just like, I'd rather be making the music. It's so much effort in it. Yeah. Um, so you don't have any PR people or anything. Like that no, no. And th this last album that we recorded, I think I reached out to 60 like independent record labels. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I go into everything, like kind of going, like nothing's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of responses, but they were, I mean, I think music right now is a, is a rough thing to be in. Cause half of them seemed like they were in a worse position than we were <laughs> like, really, How I, so? I get the responses, like really love you guys. 
we're dying right now. I'm not sure if this record label is going to be around in two months. Like, okay. that's I got so much of that. So, and these were like, um, not commercial, but uh, the indie labels. They were like physical labels. They weren't just like online ones or Bandcamp labels or anything like that. No, yeah, a lot of them. Really, what we want, like our main goal right now, is to get someone who's willing to back the money to you know do like vinyl or something mm -hmm. physical you know okay or even just promotions you know someone who just like just so we're not doing everything all the time okay but uh that did not work out we're <laughs> we're, we're still diy well how are you finding these people as someone who tries to reach out to people with my own stuff one of the daunting tasks is trying to find people to reach out to. I don't know where the hell to look. Where where were you finding these people? You said you've reached out to a bunch of them. Yeah, so we played a show with a band who had a record label in Rochester maybe a couple months ago. And the first thing I wanted to ask them, I was like, how the fuck did you get a record deal? Mm -hmm. And they said, we reached out to over 180 record labels. And the only one that reached back to us gave us a deal. Hmm. So once I knew that you can just reach out to these people, it was just like becoming an internet sleuth. I would look up bands that I like. I would message their record labels. Like, it, I just like went crazy for like a week, just researching and researching Reddit. People would okay. just make lists on Reddit. Oh, yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah, I just, once I knew that you could do that, because, I mean, the people who run these record labels a lot of times are just, guys who love music you know right and just want to put them out so in and even for me like not getting not getting anything out of it um it was worth it just to have people write us back and just know that there was people listening to it and they gave us good you know feedback on some stuff and, and it was cool okay and so you I, i'm assuming you had like a spreadsheet or something that you were keeping track of all these in or were you just kind of doing it as they came along <laughs> that's how dumb i am i was just like find the email, write the email, and then be like, like, I probably hit some people up more than once and not even realizing it. You're not that dumb. I only just started actually keeping the list myself. Like I, I, I've had to go through and go, I know I sent the email. I can search my email to try and see if I found this person or, cause then I'm like, what, no follow up? I'm just going to forget who the hell it, no, you're not yeah. alone in this. I've done it too. My buddy was like, oh yeah, you should have kept a list so we could give it to other bands. And I was like, yeah, that would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay so you were really just going out there and hard looking although i like that reddit idea i never you're right people i i assume people are putting sharing that stuff on there yeah just type in like especially like i at first i typed in indie record label but it was you know it was like domino like all the big ones mm -hmm. sub pop so then i would just be like indie record label in wisconsin and then i would mm -hmm. just get even more down to it okay and then you realize like every city has a few record labels that you can annoy. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to look at it. <laughs> now, so you said you have not put out any physical stuff or you just want somebody to help? Like, have you put out physical stuff in the past? Yeah, for our last record, Lick It Up, we did cassettes, which turns out no one listens to those anymore. <laughs> right. But... No, the only news headlines like to say cassettes are making a comeback. Yeah. No, but nobody can play them. <laughs> it's basically a business card. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. But uh, yeah, that, that was that was it. That was the only one we did. And then for this one, we thought about it. But, you know, that, there's nothing more depressing than having like a hundred of your own record in your garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that album though, or that, uh, first of all, that song, I love the video for it too. Just the, the amount of smarm in it is just perfect in that video. <laughs> yeah. The way you're holding the mic and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I really do dig that one. So is that a play on the kiss song, uh, at all? Or Dude, we had no fucking idea. You didn't at all. And I knew the song and I think I just didn't even, we didn't even like attach two and two. Uh huh. We just like had, we just, I wrote that riff. We were playing around with it and we were going like, lick it up. And we were like, this, this is good. Let's just write a song based off that. And then, uh, yeah, then we found out after that we copied Kiss, which yeah. makes it even better in my opinion. I like it. I think it added to the video I, personally, but no, I, I do dig that song a lot. And you're right. That is when you started doing more 
that's when it was evolving the uh that stuff there and oh who's doing the album covers for you i i like the themes or the aesthetic of the album covers you're doing like you got the one with the uh with like the i don't know the the little tag on it first of all yeah uh, yeah the price tag and then the lick it up one is nice and then you've got your new one that's out who's doing those album covers that that's me no it's you but we're very cooperative and like we all we just take like a bunch of photos and then we all pick which one we we like okay yeah being right. in a band like i said it's taught me like i need to like I, it's taught me how to take photos and photoshop and just when you have to do it you start getting good at it <laughs> <laughs> want to learn a trade be in a band yeah, yeah that's a good slogan for it and uh why haven't you taught yourself how to make a website yet you guys don't have a website correct so I feel like websites are like cassettes. No one's no one's using them. <laughs> Instagram's right. like our website, I guess, or our band camp, you know? Okay, gotcha. All right. And then, uh, so what are some of the things you have coming up that you'd want to tell people about? We're we're writing right now. We're, we want to put out at least another EP this year. And uh, yeah, we're just going to try to play as many shows as possible. That's always our goal. It's just to have okay. fun, hang out. When do you think the EP that you are working on might come out? What are, what are you shooting for? I'm shooting for by November. I'd like to have at least four or five new songs. All right. Okay. And if people wanted to check out your stuff, where should they go do that? Go to uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all those. And for safety meeting. Yeah, safety meeting and Instagram, safety.meeting. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah, I hope it didn't suck. <laughs> <laughs>